With a GoPro, you can create excellent videos, and the good image quality is certainly one of the strengths of a GoPro. Nevertheless, even on my channel, there are often questions and complaints about the image quality. That's why I want to show you in this video 5 reasons why your GoPro footage might not look as good as you would expect. For all 5 reasons, I will try to give you tips on how you could improve the quality of your videos. My name is Werner, I live in the Italian Alps, and this channel is about filmmaking tutorials, GoPro, and reviews of consumer cameras. Consider subscribing if you are new here and have fun with this video. The GoPro is a great camera for travel, action and sports. Like any other tool, it has its limitations. The sensor of a GoPro is very small and even though sensor size isn't everything, the amount of light that such a sensor can capture is very limited. Now, when you shoot with a GoPro, in simple terms, two factors decide the brightness of your shot. The ISO value and the shutter speed. We should take a quick look at these two values if we want to understand the first two causes of a failed shot. The shutter speed determines the length of the exposure time. In other words, how long the light hits the sensor. The longer this exposure time is, that means the lower the shutter speed, the brighter the image will be. The ISO value, on the other hand, determines how sensitively the sensor reacts to light. A high ISO value means that the sensor reacts much more sensitively to the incoming light. The image becomes brighter. This is especially important when you shoot in low light. However, high ISO values also have disadvantages. They lead to ugly image noise. And that brings us to our first problem. Even on a GoPro, a high ISO value leads to artifacts and ugly image noise. You can get the best image quality with an ISO value of 100. And up to an ISO value of 400, the image still looks good. With 800 it becomes critical and a shot with an ISO value of 1600 is not really usable anymore. The GoPro sets the ISO value automatically in the default configuration and the maximum is set to 1600. So in bad lighting conditions, it could be possible that the camera shoots with an ISO value of 1600. The result will not look good. For this reason, I generally recommend setting the maximum ISO value to 400 or 800. Unfortunately, we didn't solve all problems with this. Because if there is not enough light and the ISO value is limited, the camera's automatic will try to increase the exposure time. Because only this way, the image can get brighter. And this brings us to our second problem. A too long exposure time. A longer exposure time that means a lower shutter speed leads not only to a brighter image, but also to more motion blur. In filmmaking, there is a general rule for optimal image quality and the perfect motion blur. The shutter speed should be twice as high as the frame rate. So if you're shooting with 30 frames per second, the shutter speed should be at 160th of a second. This is also called the 180 degree rule. Every pro will shoot this way, unless he wants to achieve a very special effect. Unfortunately, this rule does not necessarily apply to a GoPro. The 180 degree rule creates a certain amount of motion blur. The individual frames of your shot don't look razor sharp, but they contain a slight amount of motion blur. Normally this is ok, but the great strength of a GoPro is its excellent electronic stabilization. And this hyper smooth stabilization works better when the individual frames are sharp. If now the shutter speed is too low, too much motion blur will occur and the stabilization will not work properly. Your shot will look very strange, as in this example. This already applies to the otherwise ideal 180 degree rule. If the shutter speed is even lower, the video will look blurred and definitely not good. If we look at these first two problems, we can only come to the conclusion that the GoPro is not made for low light conditions. And that is the case. By low light I also mean a normal indoor shot with artificial light or a shot in a shady forest. When you look at GoPro's commercials, you will see almost exclusively shots in good daylight. And that's ok, after all it is an action camera. If you still want to shoot in low light, I would recommend using a low frame rate, for example 24 frames per second. If possible, I would use the camera on a tripod. This way, you don't need the stabilization and can stick to the 180 degree rule, which means setting the shutter manually to 150th of a second. Then I would manually set the ISO value and keep it as low as possible. In case you are interested in which tripods I use or what my other favorite GoPro accessories are, I've put some links in the video description. The next problem has to do with the dynamic range. The GoPro generally has difficulties with situations that have a high dynamic range. These are shooting situations that contain both very dark areas and very bright areas. For example, if you are in a rather dark forest, but there are also parts of the sky in the frame. Or also quite typically, if you are in a building and there is a window in the frame. 
In these cases, it often happens that the bright areas in the image, that is the sky or the window, burn out completely. No more details can be seen, everything is just white or looks strange. You will not be able to expose all areas of the image optimally with your GoPro. What you could do is to set exposure for the highlights. This is very easy with the exposure control. You tap on the display and select a bright area in your image. A white square will appear and the exposure will change. You confirm the new exposure by tapping on the check mark. If you want to prevent the camera from correcting the exposure again, simply tap the white square again before confirming. A small lock will appear and you can fix the new exposure with the check mark. However, the image will get darker, something that is not always optimal, especially if you are filming people in the darker areas of the image. With a GoPro, you want to get detailed footage and if possible in a higher resolution. However, the file sizes should also be kept within limits. To achieve this goal, the recorded image data is compressed by the camera. This does not necessarily have to be a problem. Often, it will not even be noticed. However, there are cases in which the image quality is visibly reduced by this compression. This is especially the case if your shot contains a lot of small details, such as a meadow with grass or a forest with many small branches. So-called compression artifacts may occur. The video image looks pixelated or muddy in certain parts. Often the video image will still look good on your own PC, but when you upload it to YouTube, the mentioned compression artifacts will occur, because YouTube compresses the uploaded video files again. I had to find out that GoPro footage, just like the footage of other action cams, is much more affected than the footage of a mirrorless or DSLR. Last year I made some tests and a video on this topic. I found that 4K videos on YouTube suffer much less from this image compression. You should therefore export and upload your videos in 4K. On the GoPro Hero 8 you can set the bitrate to high and get 100 megabits per second. I don't want to exclude the possibility that this could improve the compression issue. However, I haven't seen any significant improvements even after uploading to YouTube. In general, you should be aware that this problem will occur when you are going to shoot in a certain environment. Our last problem also has to do with compression. This time I'm referring to situations where your shot has little contrast. For example, if you want to take landscape shots on a cloudy day, especially if it is a snowy landscape like this one. In these cases, you have the problem that possible details disappear due to the compression and a completely flat image remains. Normally, I recommend to shoot with a flat color profile. This will desaturate the image, it contains less contrast, but you have much more flexibility in post, so if you want to use your own color grading. In the mentioned cases, where your image already has little contrast, I would advise against it. Because of the flat color profile, additional details might get lost, since the image is still compressed. As you can see here, the shot taken with the color set to GoPro has more details than the shot taken with the flat color profile, even after grading. So what should you take away from this video? Let's recap in a few sentences. With a GoPro, you get an excellent image quality outdoors and in good lighting conditions. In low light but also indoors and artificial light, you have to pay attention to the ISO value. Already from an ISO value of 800, your shot will look grainy and unattractive. A low shutter speed unfortunately also causes problems, as it prevents the electronic stabilization from doing its job. A too low shutter speed could therefore also ruin your shot. The GoPro has problems with situations where there are very bright and very dark areas in the same frame. The bright areas could burn out. You can solve the problem with the exposure control, but you will get the darker image. Shots that contain a lot of small details can lead to compression issues especially if you upload to YouTube. Consider rendering and uploading your projects in 4K. A flat color profile is not suitable for low contrast shooting situations. You will lose details due to the compression. And that's it for today. If the video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback and see you next time.